I am George Potter, and I'm listening to Gospel Tangents. It's the best source for Mormon history, science, and theology, and first daily Mormon history podcast. I'm Rick Bennett. You know, I think there are at least 13 different theories for where the real Mount Sinai is. Most people know it's not on the Sinai Peninsula where uh, St. Catherine's Monastery is, but uh, we're going to talk more about that with George Potter. He thinks, and I think he makes a great case, that it's in Saudi Arabia, near the land of Midian. So we'll talk to more to George about why he thinks it's there, and you won't want to miss this conversation. Check it out. Welcome to Gospel Tangents. I'm excited to have a repeat visitor on our show. Could you go ahead and tell us who you are and where we are? I'm George Potter, and uh, you're here in my home in Elk Ridge, Utah. All right. So George is our Middle East expert. Um, Last time we talked about the uh, Lehi's Trail through Saudi Arabia. Um, A lot of people, maybe new listeners, maybe didn't hear you the first time. Um, How did you get involved in Saudi Arabia? Well, I I worked there for 27 years as an executive uh, leadership coach for the power company there. It's actually G's largest company in the world, largest customer. So we had like 70 power plants, if you can imagine, and I worked with their consultants. I mean, with their executives. Okay. Was it, was it Aramco, is that, if I remember right? Well, it's a Saudi Electricity Company. It's the company that powers the company that powers the world. In other words, we send the power to Aramco, and they pump oil and make petroleum for everybody. Okay, okay. Well, very good. So I would just remind everybody, if you haven't seen our talk about Lehi's Trail, please go check that out. Uh, Today, we're going to talk a little bit about something different. Now, you just retired from... uh... Been retired for three years now. Oh, has it been three years? (laughs) Semi-retired. I'm I'm still gotten, whether I like it or not, into kind of the tour industry. So I'm taking tourists to see places like Lehi's Trail and Mount Sinai and uh, sites in Peru. Okay. Okay, and so uh, so we're here to talk uh, a little bit about Mount Sinai, and uh, you know, so as we as we know, as we look at the Bible, um, Moses fled to the land of Midian, which appears to be on the Saudi Arabian Peninsula. Is that right? That's correct. Okay, and so there are some people who believe that Mount Sinai is not on the Mount Sinai Peninsula, but actually in Saudi Arabia. Well, apparently Moses had the same idea. Okay. Where did Moses find the burning bush? He found it in Midian, one of these, uh, I guess, shepherding Jethro's flock. And Mm -hmm. he says he did it on the backside of the mountains. So I have here, this is a uh, 1900. 79 version of the King James Bible, LDS sure. edition. All right. And in it, it has the route of the Exodus, okay? Okay. And uh, if you notice here, if you look in your edition, this is Midian here. Midian is Can not in the Sinai yeah. Peninsula. Okay. Midian is in Arabia. Okay. And he said he saw the burning bush while tending the flocks on the backside of the wilderness, which means he's on the inland side of the mountains. Okay. There, so it has nothing to do. With Sinai is hundreds of miles away um, in terms of a herding flock. <laughs> I think there are thirteen locations for Mount Sinai, but I believe uh, that it's probably in. It's not on the Sinai Peninsula. It's actually in Saudi Arabia. Well, I've been to St. Catharines in Sinai Peninsula, the traditional site that people believe is Mount Sinai. Well, why they believe it, Constantine's mother went there with a psychic. And the psychic just looked at the mountain and goes, that's it. And if you go there, it's completely barren. It's in the wrong location. There's no artifacts there that would indicate that it had nothing to do with Mount Sinai. It mm-hmm. was just his guess, I guess you might say. Spiritualized guess, mystical guess. But there's no reason to believe that's Mount Sinai. Okay. And so, because it's, uh, yeah, it seems like, correct me if I'm wrong, because you're probably a bigger expert on this than me, but, uh, you know, Moses was raised in Egypt as, as kind of a prince, it seems like, and then he was angry that an Egyptian was beating a, a Israelite slave. He killed the Egyptian, and then he fled 
to Saudi Arabia, basically, to the land of Midian. Is that right? And in Midian, yes. And that's where the burning bush and all that happened. Right. That's where Mount Sinai was. He was tending the flocks of Jethro. It okay. would have been right there in Midian. So in the backside of the mountains. Okay. Where there's lots of pasture for sheep. So there's not two lands of Midian, one on the Sinai Peninsula and one in Saudi Arabia. The land of Midian is in Arabia. There's even still the ruins of the city of Midian. And up Maybe I'll show you later pictures of what they call Jethro's Well there. Okay. Some dispute whether that's actually Jethro's Well, but the locals say it is, and the locals believe that that's where the city of Midian is. Mm -hmm. Actually, the archaeologists do the same. Even up to when I was living in Arabia, the road maps showed a map saying this is Jugabe's town. This is the town of Jethro. It's on the, on the road maps, Jethro's town. So apparently it's in Arabia. I tend to agree with them. Okay. Well, very good. And so um, I, and I believe the Muslims call it Jebel Musa or Mount of Moses. Is that right? Yeah, Jebel Musa. There's Wadi Musa there. Again, on the road maps, you can see all sorts of references to Moses being there. Okay. So it 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 seems to me this is a relatively new. And when I say new, within the last 20, 30 years or so, like this hasn't been traditionally a, like a tourist spot, but it seems like as we were talking uh, before we started the interview, it's getting to be a tourist spot. Is that right? Well, yeah, it's, it's a place now where you can get visas to go into Saudi Arabia. We can get visas for people. We can go in. And where we had to go through just desert wadis, jeep trails to try to find this mountain, and I'll explain maybe later how we found it. Um, today, there's a paved road that takes you right there, and they have uh, taken down the antiquities fences. As you can walk in, you can see the artifacts that are there, and white people believe it's Mount Sinai. Okay. So why do you think there has... So you've been in Saudi Arabia basically for the last 30 years? Is that fair to say? Fair to say, yeah. Okay. And so... Uh, how did you come across Mount Sinai in Arabia? Well, <clears throat> actually, Mount Sinai led us to Lehi's Trail. I can uh -huh. get to that a little bit later. But we know that Moses was in Midian. And then the next record we have anybody going to Mount Sinai is Elijah, who went to Mount Sinai. And he stayed in a cave, and that's where he heard the still, small voice. So he's there. So there's got to be a cave that he was at at Mount Sinai. And he said he went there. While he was there, he was uh, fed by angels with bread that was baked on coals. But Bedouins still do that today. I've been in their tents and they've made bread just on coals. And it just takes you right back there to the days. So we have Elijah. The next person we know that went to Mount Sinai was the Apostle Paul. And very few people realize it, but they look at the book of Galatians, chapter 1, we know that Paul, when he was converted, he didn't go to Jerusalem to meet with the apostles. He went to Arabia, where he was taught by the Lord. Then he went back to Damascus, and after three years, he went to Jerusalem to meet with Peter and James. So Paul went to Arabia. If you go to chapter 4 in Galatians, Paul says Mount Sinai is in Arabia. He wrote it right there in Galatians. How did he know that Mount Sinai is in Arabia? He was there. So that's the next one. The next indication I had uh, of anybody knowing that Mount Sinai was possibly in Saudi Arabia was the great English explorer Richard Burton in 1877. He went to Midian looking for gold. Okay. And he heard rumors of Mount Sinai being to the east. He also located what we believe is uh, Mara, where they, Mara, where they cured the, the bitter waters. Moses took the branch and cured the bitter waters. So he, he found that place. But he did not find Mount Sinai, but he heard that Mount Sinai was due to the east, and he wrote to Queen Elizabeth about that. So that's the that's, uh, next indication. Then there was another French explorer who claimed he found it. And based on his writings, um, a guy named Larry Williams and Ron Wyatt 
snuck, both of them snuck into Saudi Arabia at different times, and they claimed they found Mount Sinai. The way I got involved was when I was first living in Saudi Arabia, there were groups of people who were trying to use Larry Williams's book, um, The Mountain of Moses, to try to find Mount Sinai. He had pictures of this mountain and pictures of the artifacts over there. This he, is in Arabia. This is in Arabia. This is in, in Saudi Arabia. So groups have been going out looking for this mountain that Larry Williams gave some very crude directions. You go on this highway in the book, and it said you get to a gas station, and then from the gas station, you head out into the desert to the south, and you go down until the Jeep road kind of splits, and then you go west for a ways and follow that route, and you, you find the mountain. <laughs> and so, literally, there had been dozens of expats out looking for Mount Sinai and not found it. There were four groups of LDS who had come together to try to look for it as well. Their four-wheel drives, and none of them could find it. And so it was very frustrating for people starting to think, there's no such mountain out there. These are just made-up photographs. So my a patriarch of my stake, Tom Kohler, and another guy named Craig Thorsted, a member of the church there, they came to me one night and asked me, if, hey, could you take us to look for Mount Sinai. Um, we have this book, and we're, we're looking for it. And you have a four-wheel drive, and we don't. So could you take us up there on the next holiday? So I. So read, from where you were, where how far away was this approximately? Um, it would have been about 16 hours Oh, my goodness. That's away. a long way. So actually, what I, I told them, I said, look, I, I read the book. I looked at those instructions. I said, are you guys crazy? There's 10,000 mountains. There's a mountain range that runs the whole western edge of Saudi Arabia. Okay. Kind of like the Rocky Mountains or the Sierra Nevadas or something. I said, how are you going to find one mountain out of all those mountains based on those instructions? So I said, look, I'll go up there and I'll give you one day to find the mountain. And they were going to Petra. In Jordan, because okay. I can see Petra on a map, but I've never been there. Yeah. And I'm just going to keep on going another five or six hours, and I get to Petra, and there's a map that takes you right there. Isn't Petra where Raiders of the Lost Ark has the that one scene there? Yeah. Like they ride their horses through the uh, wadi there. Yeah. That magnificent wadi. That was the capital of the Nebateans. So, and I said, I'll, I'll do it, but on that condition. So, Tom Culler said, well, I, 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 think, I think we got some help. I met some, uh, some people at work who know people who work, they all work for Aramco. I said, they know somebody who works for Aramco up in that area, and, and they know some Bedouins who know where Mount Moses is. So I said, oh, that's, that's a help. That sounds pretty interesting. So we drove up there. We rendezvoused with these, uh, these teenage Arab Bedouin kids. One spoke English, and so they, they constantly, they took us up to Jabal al-Laz, mm -hmm. which is, was being torn apart to be the uh, base for a, a radar station that the Americans are building for the Saudis, okay. peace shield program. And obviously, it was the wrong mountain. Well, it could have been the right mountain, but there's no indication whatsoever that it would have been Mount uh, Sinai, and uh, nothing that appeared to be the kind of artifacts that were being shown in the Larry Williams book. So we camped out there one night, and the next morning they said, could we just drive a little bit further south from where we left off on our fourth attempt to find Mount Sinai? So I said, okay, we'll, we'll spend the morning, then we'll head off to Petra. So we, we got in our cars and went about eight miles further south. And we went maybe a quarter mile at most past where the group had stopped on their fourth expedition to try to find it. We ran around a kind of a curve, and lo and behold, there was the mountain that was shown in Larry Williams' book. 
So that was interesting. So then, okay, we there's the mountain. Let me show you this. Some pictures here. So turn around. There's a the same old mountain that was appeared in this book. Okay. Okay. So that's uh that that just blew us away because if that's where the mountain is, then where's the altar? And and where's the burning bush? <laughs> burning bush. <laughs> I think I burned out, I think. So then we drove along and we saw this natural formation. Okay. Okay. Which he claimed was the altar of the uh, golden calf. Okay. Okay. And aren't, aren't there like calf drawings on there or something? Well, they, there are. And uh, so we we didn't count them, but they were there. and And so... We went through, and there's probably two dozen of these Egyptian style golden calves. Okay. Uh, their calf god is uh, there. So Moses got mad and then broke the Ten Commandments because they were worshiping the golden calf, right? At least that's the story. Yeah. And what's interesting, <laughs> let's take this picture here. This is a natural formation of rocks. Okay. It's maybe. 100 feet in di um, circumference, and on the top of it, you have a Nebatean style place for making sacrifices, a place where you'd slaughter the animal, and then where a canal where the blood would flow down over the side of the altar. Hmm. So very, very impressive. So then we spent another couple hours going to the other artifacts that they claimed were associated with Moses. This was what they claim to be the altar of Moses. You go in one canal, one line of rocks, to a altar at the back, okay. at the end, and then come out the other direction. Then in back of that was a couple of rooms, like a Holy of Holies or whatever. Oh, wow. So very interesting. Still there today. Um, that just gives you a little bit of idea of the width of the paths going okay. in and out. Yeah. So people could go up to uh, make their sacrifices. I uh, don't know if you can see that. Here's some more calf images from the, the altar. Okay. And there's some more. The golden calf, basically. Yeah. yeah. So then another thing that's really interesting is next to it, or just very close within, uh, 20 feet of the um, altar of Moses, you have these granite, or excuse me, marble pieces of pillars that are laying around. Now, what's the explanation for those those pillars? Lynn Helton claimed and wrote in his book that um, before there was a temple of Solomon, that delegations from Israel would go to Mount Sinai every year to make sacrifices. That was still their only temple, was Mount Sinai, or as a sacred place. And so they'd go back there. So the Israelites were in Arabia? They weren't, on, they weren't in the land of Israel at this time, I guess? No, no, they were in Israel, but a delegation would go back would go every back. year okay. and make a sacrifice at Mount Sinai, the holy mountain. That's where the law came from. And, and of course, the uh, the... Jews or the Israelis are all about the law mm -hmm. and, and and Moses. Now, what else um, is there to see? Well, we hiked up to a cave that's 20 feet deep um, and looks out over the valley. And so there's a cave, maybe 500 feet up on the mountain. There's this very nice cave, very deep. Elijah could have stayed there as long as he wanted to, listened to the storm, but heard the still small voice. Then uh, something that Wyatt didn't find, we drove along the side of the mountain, and as you drove along there, there were 11 places where you had these uh, charons or piles of rocks, but there's a hole in the middle. So you see uh, Ed Benson here standing in those holes. Oh, okay. So what I think my explanation is, is that they put a... Um, a uh, hole in there with a banner of each tribe. Hmm. Okay. And there's 12 of them, you said? On, they're right along the edge of the mountain. Okay. Now remember, in the account in the Old Testament, 
Moses was told, build barriers so that the people would not touch the mountain. They could not go onto the mountain. So right along the mountain are 11 of these things with perhaps had a flagpole on it and the people camped next to it, but they couldn't go beyond that barrier. So 12 tribes of Israel, 11 of these things along the side of the mountain. We know that Levi was not didn't have its own tribe. They mingled with all the other tribes. You would have had 11 of these barriers uh, put there. Huh. So that's that's uh, fascinating. So, of course, at, by this time, I had forgotten about Petra altogether. I was totally sold on, on the mountain. And, and people, when they go there, they get all excited about the top of that mountain. Because it looks burned. It looks burned, okay? Yeah. <laughs> well, there's, uh, I think it's volcanic, but so be it. So what's the conclusion? Is that Mount Sinai? I'm, I'd say of all the things I've read about the other 13 Sinais or whatever, there's no artifacts there. There's no reason to believe that that's where it was. Well, here we have some ancient artifacts that are consistent with the record in in Exodus. So, every I've probably taken 40 or 50 people up there to Mount Sinai. And everyone leaves there telling me that's Mount Sinai. <laughs> Have they been to the others? I'll leave my conclusion <laughs> for another time. But um, they're all pretty, it's pretty convincing when you go there. It just makes a lot of sense. Have you been to some of the others, like St. Catherine's and the Sinai Princeton? It's only St. Catherine's. That's the only other one you've been to? It's completely barren. There's no fodder there for the, the animals to, to eat. Mm -hmm. There's no artifacts that would indicate that it's there. There's no indication they would have had to cross the Red Sea to get there. And supposedly they crossed the Red Sea. Yeah. So by this time, I'm totally, of course, taken in that let's go look for the rest of what we have here, Moses sites, because Petra can wait for another day. This is too too exciting. So from Mount Sinai, you see a little V-shaped mountain in the background. That's Mount Sinai. And this is the ruins of Midian. Okay. Okay. It's the, today it's the town of Albeda, but there's an antiquity site there that has the ruins of the town of Jethro okay. there. So we went there. Um, to see Jethro's well. And so I went to the, uh, the mayor's office and he sent me an escort to show me the wells of Jethro. Oh, wow. Okay. And in living memory, they had water in them. Today, there's not because they're pumping up water for agriculture now. And so the water table has gone down. Okay. But the whole area is known for its, its wonderful water resources. Used to be known for. Used to be. Yeah. <laughs> now, this, again, has turned into uh, the Saudis have uh, made a fence around it. They made it a nice place for people to come and visit today. So you can see the well of Jethro. Now, archaeologists say that that was probably not the well of Jethro. Jethro's well would have been some other wells inside of the ruins of the town of Midian. But this is within 200 yards of it. And... Uh, it, it seems like a a good possibility to me still. So while I was there looking at the wells of Jethro, then you know how serendipity just happens. So I, with the supervisor, the mayor sent to show us the wells, I started talking about Moses with him. But I had read the Quran, and so... I'm using the Quranic version of Moses. Okay. And he got all excited. You know, he goes, oh, are you Muslim? <laughs> and I says, uh, no. And he says, well, what religion are you? I says, well, at that time, it couldn't, you can't discuss it in Arabia. You can't do any proselyting. Right. So I said, no, but I believe in, in the Quran. I believe in the Bible. I hope you enjoyed our conversation with Dr. George Potter. In our next conversation, we're going to talk about the springs of Moses. I said, I understand there's 12 springs where you see the water coming up. Mm -hmm. And so he said, look, I'll count them for you. He counted 11. And he said, there's one more further down the hill. There's 12 springs there. Okay. And they still flow to this day. Again, that's been turned into another little tourist place. There's a little gate now. We had to just find it now, but it's, it's open. This is a little stream that runs from it. Oh, that's pretty. 
Thanks for listening, and I hope you to continue to enjoy Gospel Tangents. Consider becoming a Patreon or go to gospeltangents.com slash shop, and you can get a cool tie, a hat, or even a nice mug. You can also get a sweatshirt, so check it out at gospeltangents.com slash shop.